With sweeping beaches, seaside towns, historic buildings, an abundance of wildlife, and miles upon miles of waterways for you to explore, Norfolk is a fantastic destination for those looking for an English summer getaway. In this video, we will show you how we spent seven days in Norfolk, so if you're considering a holiday in East Anglia, then we hope that this video will help you with ideas for your trip. If beautiful sunsets, colourful beach huts, wild seals, picturesque villages, boat adventures, seaside attractions, Tudor buildings and excessive amounts of fish and chips sounds like your cup of tea, then we hope you enjoy our one week in Norfolk. Just arrived. This is nice. Mm, it's great. Just spotted a hair outside the window of the caravan. Oh, it's so cute. First port of call after arriving at our static caravan in Hunstanton was to head straight to the seafront. We're starting our trip to Norfolk off in Hunstanton, which is also known as Sunny Honey. So I assume it means we're going to have glorious sunshine for the whole trip. We didn't. We picked up some fish and chips to eat while we watched the sunset. Because even though we're on the east coast, and Stanton faces west, which means it's one of the only places in the east where you can watch the sunset over the sea. How was fish and chips round one of the holiday? <laughs> Good. had a bit of a late start to the morning because it was absolutely chucking it down when we got up but look at it now this here is the new part of Finstanton this is where we were for the sunset and we're going to keep on walking down to Old Finstanton to see the stripy cliffs and we should pass a couple of sites on the way as well at the end of the green is the Peerless Pier. It used to be a pier that was over 800 feet long. There was a roller skating rink and a small zoo built on the pier. Most of the pier was destroyed in a storm in the 1970s and then a fire finished it off in 2002. It's a bit of a shame because it probably was a really cool spot. We just come for a stroll through the Victorian Esplanade Gardens and they're really pretty. There's some tiles with photos on from historical events and places in Hunstanton. So for example, here we can see the pier that I was talking about and next to it here you can see the fire. There's some nice views over the sea from these gardens too. If you keep walking past the gardens you'll reach the striped cliffs of Old Hunstanton whose red layers are caused by iron staining of the chalk. There are various signs around telling you not to sit too close to the cliffs and you can see from the massive piles of rocks why. We also read that there's a kind of bird here, I think it's called a fulmar and it looks quite a lot like a seagull but without the orange beak from what we can tell from Google. And if you get too close to them, if they think you're a threat, they might vomit this sort of thick bile on you. So with that combined with the rocks, don't sit too close. We found the shipwreck! The barnacle covered remains of this 1907 fishing boat can only be seen at low tide, so make sure you Google tide times first if you want to see it. Next we headed to the Marina's Beer Garden for our first pub trip since lockdown. <laughs> There's a cracking view from this beer garden. Walking through the idyllic village of Old Hunstanton felt very calm and quiet compared to the newer part of Hunstanton. Before taking the 30 minutes walk back to our caravan we stopped off at St Edmund's Point, where you can see Hunstanton Lighthouse, the Lookout Tower and the 13th century ruins of St Edmund's Chapel. We've come back into town for sunset and some fairground rides. Are you excited? <laughs> Rainbow Park isn't a large fairground, but it does offer a few of the classics. Rather than purchasing a wristband, you'll pay for rides individually, which can add up quickly, but it's worth stopping by to go on a couple of your fun fair favourites. How dizzy are you feeling? <laughs> Very. <laughs> The next day we got up early and drove around 30 minutes to Wells Next the Sea. Whenever we tell people we're coming to Norfolk, Wells Next the Sea is somewhere that always cropped up as somewhere we should visit and I can already see why. There's a long row of pastel coloured beach huts that are really pretty and the sand is really soft and golden and it looks like it just goes on forever. Have you seen some of them have got names? We've decided we want to walk all the way to the sea for a paddle. 
and it's actually a lot further away than we realised. This beach is absolutely massive. Hello. <laughs> Made a friend. Worth it! We didn't spend long paddling as the tides can change quickly along the Norfolk coast. Information on tide times that day is conveniently displayed in Wells Beach Car Park. Speaking of parking, the cost was £9 for a day, unless you do what someone did and press the wrong button so you end up paying twice. Next we walked 15 minutes into the town of Wells Next to the Sea, which is a working fishing port. It's also a popular place to go crabbing in the summer. Overall in Norfolk, we mostly found that social distancing wasn't too difficult, particularly as most days we got up early to avoid large crowds. However, we did find parts of the harbour a little too busy, so we quickly moved on to explore more of this picturesque town. The green surrounded by Georgian houses and little cottages and a couple of pubs. It's really nice. Once it was fish and chips o'clock, we headed to French's, which had cropped up again and again when looking up best fish and chips in Norfolk. Oh yes. <laughs> fish and chips, score out of ten. Uh, nine. Uh, because they have gherkins and fennel lemon, which definitely makes it annoying. After finishing our fish and chips, we ended our day back at Stanton for one final sunset. The next morning, we checked out of our caravan in Hunstanton, ready to head down south to relocate to a lodge nestled on the edge of the Norfolk Broads. On our way down, we planned a couple of stops, with the first being the iconic horsey wind pump. Horsey Wind Pump, which is brilliantly named, managed to withstand storms, floods and wars before it was a lightning strike that finally put it out of action in, I think it was the 1940s. The National Trust has taken over it now, so it's a tourist attraction. I think you can normally go inside, but at the moment you can't because it hasn't reopened fully since lockdown, but you can still come up to it. If you are driving, there is a car park available by the wind pump, or if you are travelling by boat, mooring is available for a fee. Next we're walking down to the beach, where we might get to see some seals, we hope. It's not quite the right time of year for us, so if you definitely want to see seals, you should come in winter. But we might get lucky, because they can be here all year round. The walk from Horsey Wind Pump to Horsey Gap Beach is around a mile and a half each way. The walk itself is very pleasant and offers different vantage points to view Horsey Wind Pump. Seals! Seals, 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 seals! I apologise that these clips are a little rubbish, however we decided that the cuteness of the seals outweighed the quality of the video, so I've included them anyway. Next we drove a short three and a half miles to Winterton on Sea, which is a small coastal village with a beautiful sandy beach, flower-lined streets, pretty thatched cottages, an impressive church, and a holiday park of quirky roundhouses. How cool are these? They look like something straight out of a cartoon. After a walk along the beach and around the village, we headed to Fritton to check into our next accommodation. If you're looking for somewhere to stay that is close to the Norfolk Broads or Great Yarmouth, or somewhere further up north like Hunstanton, we will be sharing tours of both our Fritton Lodge and our Hunstanton caravan on this channel, so keep an eye out for those if you're interested in watching. The Broads is a network of over 120 miles of navigable rivers and lakes, most of which are in Norfolk. You can explore areas of the Norfolk Broads on foot or by bike, but the best way to discover these enchanting waterways is by boat. Boating holidays are popular on the Broads, but if you don't fancy spending your whole trip on the water, then you can hire a day boat. We chose to hire our day boats from Broads Tours in Wroxham, which is the main hub of boating holidays on the Broads. When you pick up your boat, you'll be given a quick lesson before you set off to explore. How's it going over there, Captain? Great, it's going great. Can't run over any ducks. No. Bonus. I thought I, thought I had run over a duck for a second, but it was just the wake of another boat. <laughs> Don't worry, if you have no experience, none is required, and operating the boat is really easy. And with a maximum speed limit of five miles per hour, what could go wrong? Seriously though, just drive sensibly and stick to the rules of the waterways. It's pretty straightforward and a lot of fun. Our first stop was Horning, which is said to be one of the prettiest villages on the Broads. 
The new inn had good reviews and offered free mooring to customers, so we decided this would be a good spot for an early lunch. I generously allowed Erin to take the lead in mooring our boat up for the first time, which incidentally was next to a boat that looked much more expensive than ours, and which we also overheard the owner saying was brand new, because of course it was. Well done on your successful mooring of the boat. Yeah, that wasn't as terrifying as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, we got it in there. Yeah. It didn't quite bosh the person's brand new boat that was next to us. <laughs> That's good. We later realised that there was actually a man there helping people with mooring, so you don't need to attempt to do it solo like we did. After our quick lunch stop, we were back on the water. There will be a huge variety of boats for you to see on the broads, but make sure you don't miss the most important boat of all. Just bought ice cream from an ice cream boat. Yeah. <laughs> and he's playing ice cream band music. This really helpfully tells you how long it takes to get from the different points back to Broad's Tours. While there are plenty of places to moor up, we were enjoying our time on the boat so much that we spent the rest of the day driving around the rivers and broads, enjoying the beautiful scenery, the large variety of birds and the tranquil atmosphere. I like this bit. Can actually look really wild around. If hiring your own motorboat does appeal to you, then we would say definitely give it a go. It was one of our favourite experiences in Norfolk. The cost at Broad's tour started at £21 per hour, although it is cheaper to hire a boat for the full day like we did. Personally, I feel like if we had only hired the boat for a couple of hours, then it wouldn't have been long enough, and they would have struggled to tear us away when the time was up. As it was, a full day felt like a good amount of time to really enjoy our time on the boat, and we do now definitely see the appeal of a full boating holiday on the broads. Yep. We just got back to the car park. We parked at Rocks and Broad car park, which is about a 30 minute walk to the boat hire place. But then when we got there, we found out there's actually a large car park right at the spot where you pick up your boats. So learn from our mistakes. another beautiful day here in Norfolk and we've come to Fairhaven Woodland and Water Gardens. When looking for best things to do in the Norfolk Broads this place cropped up a lot and now that we're in our 30s we like looking at plants so we figured it was a good choice for a day out. Nearly four miles of pathways, boardwalks and bridges lead you through 130 acres of beautiful woodlands where you will be surrounded by an abundance of plants, trees and wildlife. There's so many butterflies around here. Currently because of social distancing, it's a one-way system everywhere now. So you just pick a route. We're gonna go for the black route, which is the one hour, 30 minutes one. But you can chop and change as much as you want, apparently, as long as you stick to the one-way system. At the time of making this video, you must pre-book your arrival time, which you can easily do through the Fairhaven website. It's really peaceful and there's hardly anybody here. I don't know if it's always this quiet or if it's just because they're limiting the number of people who can enter because you have to book a ticket in advance now but it's really tranquil, we've hardly seen anybody. As we wandered through the gardens, we also spotted lots of carved animals and signs containing interesting nuggets of information. It wasn't until the early 1950s that we realised that the broads are not a natural feature. Dr Joyce Lambert discovered that the broads are a series of flooded pits which were dug during the Middle Ages. Hmm. We loved our day at Fairhaven Woodland and Water Garden and would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a land-based activity on the broads. Great Yarmouth is your traditional British bucket and spade style seaside resort. It is a popular destination with families due to the multitude of seafront attractions and the impressive sandy beach. This whole seafront area is called the Golden Mile and just look at this stretch of beach, you can see why. This is stunning. If you're looking for a calm and picturesque beach resort then Great Yarmouth probably isn't what you're looking for. However, there is no denying that there are plenty of fun things to see and do here, so we added it to our Norfolk itinerary. With another crowd dodging early start, we parked up at the almost empty seafront car park and set off to explore. There's loads of really cool old style tourist posters along this fence here. I don't know why, but I really like the Hippodrome building. I love that there's a takeaway shop that looks like a pirate ship. Great Yarmouth has around 700 places to play mini golf, 
If you have seen our Orlando, Florida travel series, then you will know that we love to play mini golf, even if we aren't very good at it. So there was no way we were going to resist Pirates Cove Adventure Golf. This is a really well themed mini golf. We thought that this 18 hole mini golf was a great way to spend an hour or two, especially on a day when the weather wasn't too beach friendly. Yeah. We decided we haven't had fish and chips enough yet this week, so we got some more from Grelly's, and these look really good. Once we'd had our fill of fish and chips number three of the holiday, we made a beeline for our next seaside attraction. We've come to Merivale Model Village, and I'm actually really excited. At Merivale Model Village, you follow winding paths through a miniature world of characters and amusing scenes, and to top it off, it's all set in an award-winning landscape garden. For added fun, many of the scenes are even interactive. Are you going to press the button? Oh yes. What's going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> this is a public announcement. Oh, I see that this one's going along as well. Oh yeah, Premier Airship Carrier. Would all passengers apply? There are so many tiny little details that are easy to miss, so take your time and look carefully. There's even some subtle jokes. You see what they've called them? The cavity. And Dr. Eyelash. Some more wholesome than others. <coughs> you could probably spend an hour or so wandering around the displays before you exit through the Penny Arcade. As the wind began picking up and the dark clouds rolling in, we decided to take this as our cue to go back to the lodge and spend the rest of the day in the hot tub. After checking out of our lodge, rather than heading straight home, we decided to spend a few hours in Norwich. I admit that before our trip, we didn't really know anything about Norwich, and we were very quickly pleasantly surprised. We're starting our morning off in Elm Street, which is this beautiful cobbled street lined with all these Tudor-style houses. It's really pretty. We're here a bit early, so the shops haven't opened yet, but it's really nice to just walk around without any people. This kind of reminds me of the Shambles in York. Yeah, it's got a very similar vibe. As we didn't have long to spend exploring the city, we partially followed a free walking guide to take us around a few key sites, starting with Norwich Cathedral, which was built nearly 900 years ago. Look at the size of that spire. It's huge! Our walk also included a stop at the vibrant Norwich Market, which is one of the oldest and largest outdoor markets in England. Here there are a number of tempting food stalls which make it a great spot for lunch. There was so much that we wanted to try that we actually ended up getting both bao buns and dumplings from Bun Box, and pork kimchi ramen and butternut squash coconut noodles from Fresh. These look so good. The kimchi is really good. Um, and the pork, num 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 num. The curry broth in this is so delicious. Now that we've essentially eaten two lunches each, we've decided it's a good idea to burn it off by doing the riverside walk. This leafy riverside walk takes you around Norwich city centre and passes a couple of interesting sites on the way. Cow Tower, one of the earliest purpose-built artillery blockhouses in England, this tower was built in 1398-99 to control a strategic point in Norwich's city defences. A few hours did not feel like long enough in Norwich, and we would love to return here in the future to immerse ourselves in the city. Similar could be said for Norfolk as a whole. One week gave us a great taste of this beautiful county and left us wanting to see more. If you have any recommendations or places to visit in Norfolk that we missed, then please do share them with us and anyone viewing this video in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, then we would really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it lets us and YouTube know if we're doing something right. To watch other videos on trips around the UK and worldwide, then subscribe to our channel. We have a few other fun destinations on there at the moment and we'll continue adding new places over time. Thanks for watching.